Hello everyone, today we have a special kind of binary counter. Like many binary counters, it is capable of counting upwards, but unlike others, it can also count downwards and even has fully instant carry all the way through for both directions. And all of this while being one wide tileable. I'm not actually sure why that would be useful, but anyways, normally this would require a lot more logic. But this counter uses a very special trick. While the output side of the counter does output regular binary, it's actually the other side that does all the heavy lifting, and it counts in a special form of binary called gray code. As just mentioned, gray code is a different way of encoding numbers in binary. Its main perk is that whenever you're, you count, you only change a single bit at a time every single time. Now, I'm not going to go into too many details on this, at least not today, but the main part of the logic for figuring out which bit to toggle is uh, you pretty much find, starting from this point, you find the first set bit, or the first one, and it'll be the very next bit that you toggle. And then we simply alternate between doing that and just always toggling this very first bit. And so that's exactly what this tower here does. The signal goes past any zeros, represented with this piston being pressed up against the wall. So yeah, it goes past all the zeros, and then once it hits a one, the signal gets rerouted into toggling the very next bit. And then up at the very top, we have one extra bit called the parity. And this tracks whether we should toggle bit zero or one of the others, and it just simply reuses all the same logic. So, you know, once it's pulled back, it just gets rerouted into toggling bit zero instead. Now, it's pretty clear to see that for one way counters, gray code isn't actually a whole lot simpler. Though, now that I have them both laid out, the difference is a lot smaller than I remembered. Oh well. Um, but, Anyways, gray code starts to really have an advantage when it comes to two-way counting. Because, remember when I said that, you know, we alternate between bit zero and, well, something else based on what bits are on? Well, guess what happens if you do the other one? Well, you end up just going back to whatever number that you would have been at before counting up. Or in other words, you count back down. And so the nice thing about gray code is that to count in both directions, all the extra logic is right up here at the top. And in this case, it's really simple. <laughs> Meanwhile, regular binary ends up becoming significantly more complicated throughout the entire counter, as among other things, it needs to chain two of these signals all the way through, while again, Gray code gets by on just one. Of course, when most people think of a binary counter, they expect it to count in regular binary, not gray code. Even though gray code actually performs almost universally better for any application involving a counter due to simply changing half as many outputs at once, therefore causing a lot less lag and not running into ghost signal issues. But hey, if you really do need it to be in the ghost signal prone and more laggy version of binary, the good news is, it's not that hard, because every time we toggle a bit in gray code, it always lines up with the most significant bit that gets toggled for regular binary. And so all we have to do to get the output in binary is to put a bunch of T latches over on this other side of the column. And that is exactly what we have here. And this results in what I like to call the ISGP, or Instant Select Gray Puppet Counter. And this is because the output isn't really counting, it's more of just a puppet that is controlled by the actual counter in the back, which is itself an instant select gray code counter. And also, yes, you do not have to use pistons here. You can use copper bulbs, I just haven't worked with them yet because upload backlog is real and it can hurt you. But anyways, with that, we have ourselves a nice, simple two-way counter, and I had it going down. Oh well, 
But yeah, it's able to count every nine game ticks, though in practice, you'd probably end up wanting it to count on a 10 game tick clock, just because that's a little simpler. However, clearly this uh, interface isn't particularly helpful, as you have to pause counting before you can switch directions so that they don't interfere with each other. And that brings us back to the counter that you saw at the beginning, where we have one input that counts up, and the other input which counts down. And the main trick here is that we only toggle the parity when we do not reverse directions. So as you can see, that piston is not triggering, but then once we start counting in the same direction, it starts toggling again. And then, yep, exactly like that. And uh, yeah, this makes use of a little bit of a fun fact where if you move an observer while it's already on, then it simply does not fire when it lands. And you may have also noticed that this part right here is slightly different, and this allows the entire counter to count on an 8 game tick clock, or hopper speed, and that even includes reversing directions. Of course, I'm not very good at doing it manually. And to demonstrate the uh, reversing behavior, here I also have a working prototype that counts every 8 game ticks, but it can reverse directions at any moment without breaking. Yeah. And for both of these, you can toggle which input is which pretty easily. It's so like right now, this one is up and this one is down. All you have to do is take this part right here and manually toggle it. And now this side counts up and this side counts down. And all of this while being one wide tileable, which, again, not entirely sure how useful that is. I mean, surely there's some sort of item storage tech out there that would find this useful. Unfortunately, this tech comes with a massive downside, which is that, I mean, like a lot of things, if you send two signals too close together, not very good things happen. But in this case, the consequences are it becomes out of sync with itself. And... Worse yet, if you do need to reset it, you have twice as many latches to replace. Either way though, I here we have one final version. Um, yeah, it's basically just that original one from the beginning where you have to toggle the direction in order to change the direction. But this one is resettable. It's definitely a lot bulkier, but again, I was mainly prioritizing one wide tile ability for some reason. Anyways, to reset it, you simply activate that part right here, and then this one, and that resets the whole thing to zero, and it also resets the count direction to up, so do keep that in mind. It will not preserve the counting direction after resetting. Of course, as I alluded to previously, uh, sometimes it really is better to take the gray code output due to, you know, the fact that it only changes one bit at a time, can reduce a lot of lag, and it can also prevent ghost signals, so do keep that in mind. And with that, that is all for today. World Download can be found in the description if you want to check this out. I'd definitely be interested to see if any of y'all do anything interesting with this sort of thing. And as always, if you liked the video, be sure to support trans rights.